Kubor Kabate Si TV. Lawan Rasha Pi Daka Frank Motors. The Dark is here to rule. The National Legal Services Authority has been in the last year. The National Legal Services Authority has been in the last year. The E-Zone Regional Conference has been in the last year. Enhancing access to justice. The National Legal Services Authority has been in the last year. Hanong ba asyulong? Ha ka rin ka rin tayo ay siya mong talang daw judge jong ngayig bisa Supreme Court ka rin India Justice Sanjay Kishan Paul o balong ro o Executive Chairman jong ka National Legal Services Authority o balong o kong san ha ka rin ka sngi o Justice Sanjay Kana o balong o judge jong ngayig bisa Supreme Court jong ka rin India o Chief Justice jong ngayig bisa Megalaya High Court o Justice Sanjay Banerji ki judge jong ngayig bisa Megalaya High Court ki bagan top ya o Justice H.S. Tangkew but o Justice W. Ding do na lor ki wei ki wei ki blasha khat kar pang ha ka rin From mesmerizing hills of Rebohi district, Medhalia, comes the exquisite marspan and hand woven rindia stone in natural hues of vegetable dyes, kajan rindia. first exposure to NAMSA was through a program that was conducted late in the year 2006 in the Sundarbans. So there was an NGO headed by a lawyer friend's mother who insisted I must go over there and invited me. I agreed. I didn't know what it was about. And about seven days before we were to go, she kept on calling my secretary about whether we had informed the police, whether we had informed the district administration and the lot. And ultimately when everything fell into deaf ears, she called me and said, why haven't you informed anybody? So I said, I don't use an escort. I drive my own car. And uh, would it be embarrassing for you to join me? Unfortunately, they had to go that way without the paraphernalia. Then, is the experience at the carnival kind of atmosphere that was organized deep in the Sundarbans. Though the distance as the crow flies from Calcutta was less than 80 kilometers, we had to drive for 90 minutes, take a launch for the next hour and a half, and then finally a cycle cart to go to the venue from the cart, as they call it. And there the program was wonderful. Uh, and at the end of the program, as it was getting dark, there was this young lady who got up to deliver the vote of thanks. And that was an education that I keep sharing with everybody. This lady got up and said that sometimes we have wonderful Saturdays and bright Sundays, but we go back into our dark week from Mondays when all of the dignitaries disappear. And in the course of one of these dark days of the week, there was a young girl who was raped. And she had to walk 16 kilometers to the nearest outpost to complain that she was raped. And she was advised by everybody, don't do it. It's not worth it. She was told that she might get molested on the way back. She was resilient. She went to the outpost. She complained. Upon receipt of her complaint, she was orally raped. And on the way back, as it was dusk, she was molested. But the bright light that, you know, shone at the end of the tunnel was that the lady said, yet the girl was never ashamed for what happened to her because that was not her fault. And here she was delivering the vote of thanks amidst 
celebrities and high court judges. Sometimes we do not know the pain, the lack of facilities, the unawareness of rights and justice doesn't mean anything unless justice isn't you know the bit that we do in court that's important but as a public servant you miss the wood for the trees if you don't realize that the ultimate mandate that you have is to uplift the conditions of the citizenry this wonderful piece of legislation under which we are constituted and we are assembled today gives judges a different role and we must understand what justice in access to justice means justice is not the courtroom justice is not the law justice is in a difficult sense to explain it to remove injustice and while that is utopian we must strive towards that and it's a unique opportunity that judges under this statute and judicial and the judiciary uh, as an organization has been given this role which is completely different from what judges were reckoned to do uh, prior to this act coming into effect. As far as the Northeast and you know our region is concerned there are many things which ought to be done and I requested brother thank you to jot a few points down and some of the points that he makes are remarkable. One of those is that with the technology that we are using now, we must acquaint our PLVs with the technology and to explain the technology to the end users, particularly people who come to make representations, petitions. There must be a synergy between the e-seva kindras and people seeking legal aid and wanting to approach the court. The next and the most important aspect is in places with fragile ecologies as in Meghalaya, people must be made aware of what they ought to do and not do. You see traditional folk over here depended on the nature. They depended on their land, they depended on their forests. So, suddenly, by a law, we stopped them from using timber in the forests. By another law, we stopped them from using the produce which was in the land. So now you have a menace of rat hole mining where people, because they are not aware, are digging under their very houses without realizing that the mildest of tremor would bring the house down. There is a particular region over here around Clariot. There is a valley and a place called Rimbai over there. God forbid if there is an earthquake of any significant degree of magnitude. The third aspect that Justice Thank You points out is that in a place like Meghalaya where women are very active, they should be made aware of their rights and the remedies which are available. In particular, and as a general rule, I feel that, you know, if we empower our women and take care of our children, a lot of the work which is required to be done would have been done. Finally, we have a social audit law in Meghalaya and in respect of certain matters like elsewhere, there are public hearings which are conducted. Unfortunately, some the very few public hearings which have happened and I am aware of what happened in Tamil Nadu pertaining to the coastal region, vested interests would, you know, hijack the program and they would kind of voice their interests and their you know, agenda by working on uh, the, the, the local folk and inducing them with very, very minor kind of gifts. 
there you know our PLVs could be trained so that our PLVs make the people aware of their rights and the proper stand that ought to be taken in such situations. As far back as 1964, Justice Hugo Block said that um, there can be no equal justice where kind of a trial a man gets depends on the amount of money he has. It is with this objective in mind that uh, the Legal Service Authority Act was set up and the, uh, and the whole objective is that to the large underprivileged section of this country whose percentage and number is high and absolute numbers are also very high, there should be a sense of belief of equality in terms of uh, legal assistance and uh, because they are the found to be at the brunt, at the receiving end. Uh, if one looks at the figures, let's begin by some of the hard facts which emerges. This is Khanna gave you the data. But uh, around 70% of the under trials are from the socially vulnerable section. 29% were found to be illiterate as per data. 41% had not completed the 10th class. And 72% of the under trials belong to socially vulnerable categories of the scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, and other backward classes. So, impoverished and marginalized groups often bear, as I said, the brunt of the arbitrary address, detention, and custodial violence, while procedural protection built into the law through the medical practitioner and magistrates are often violated. The, the range of the structural barriers plaguing the system, including indiscriminate arrest, uh, restrictive bail regime, and delays in investigation, all result in the large proportion of socio-economically vulnerable under trials in India. This continued detention is something personally which has troubled me a lot. Uh, and this is despite our endeavors as an institution and personally to pass various uh, judgments uh, to see that uh, we don't convert <coughs> in our belief that we cannot achieve a conviction therefore the only way of punishing somebody is to keep him as under trial. Unfortunately, I find that is also sometimes the judicial approach. And uh, this judicial approach, uh, honestly speaking, instead of watering down, I find it, find it seeping upwards, to be very frankly. And we must be conscious of this as judges. That when we are dealing with this vulnerable section of society, the ultimate objective is to have a trial, conclude the trial. If somebody is there, punish him in accordance with law. This continued uh, 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 detention long years after no you know the person has been detected or charged with a crime is something uh, which is uh, which is very difficult to fathom. Uh, even at the Supreme Court level, we find for offences for say a maximum sentence of seven years, a person has been in custody for five years without bail. Trial is not complete. First stage is not complete. Uh, just before coming on, the, uh, one of the petitions which came before us was only on the age of juvenility. Of course, this is plea sometimes raised militarily. But the fact is, the man has gone through 11 years of custody already when the plea of juvenility is being raised. Now, if, if it is, I don't know what the result would be, if it is found that way, what is the result we are looking to? Is it that he should have been given assistance at a particular stage of time? which has not been made available. The lawyer was practically appearing pro bono and I know he takes up cases of this nature. So somewhere somebody did not flag the issue. Therefore, it's important to flag issues at the relevant stage. And that is one of the aspects the legal service authority is looking to. We can't suddenly shorten everything. That's not possible. The volume of cases are such, the procedures are such, the way the system goes on is such that uh, Unfortunately, we can only try to build up that assistance and that assistance should be of requisite quality is a very important aspect of an answer. Uh, there is a, a confluence of factors responsible for this problem uh, in this access to justice. Uh, affordable legal assistance, guaranteed fair trial, uh, upgrading the skills of the legal service authority lawyers, training for them. Sometimes the feeling is that uh, 
the lawyers assistant the legal services authority are mostly young lawyers who are wanting to make a career and uh, those are persons who want to get the exposure well, there are two aspects to it i do believe that uh, some of the younger members of the bar are are far more enthusiastic the generation today is far more enthusiastic of how to give assistance so there's no harm in it but then there must be upgradation of skill and assistance at an appropriate stage by uh, experienced lawyers the time passage required for doing our task is long but uh, while we should flag issues i think we should also in some way appreciate what we have achieved uh, therefore some of the aspects which i wanted to you know this to a brief discussion is what is that we are doing work of legal aid in india has been to some extent i would say revolutionary in character started from a very limited perspective if you see and today has expanded into a uh, huge different uh, dimension i would say uh, the kind of schemes six schemes we are today looking to particular schemes particular areas and the whole concept of regional conferences arose because while there is commonality of certain problems there is also distinction of certain problems dependent on the area where there is it has been our endeavor to carry when we talk about legal aid to the household to also carry the discussion on legal aid to the different regions and in that region also we have made an endeavor to see that uh, places where this kind of a conference is not being hosted should be the host every time pick up a new venue to do it so that there is a sense of belonging to different states and areas of what we are trying to achieve um, on the positive aspects of the data are uh, that uh, 50000 prisoner prisoners were released under the utrs recommendations 192244 prisoners of 34% of the total prison population 2021 was provided legal services by the prison legal aid clinic 91000 prisoners were provided legal aid lawyers and these numbers also highlight two key points one the poor state of private legal representation for persons considered and second the extent of socio economic vulnerable persons in our prisons uh, legal service institutions have less to do with the former but our work uh, for poor prisoner does not stop at giving them legal representation in civil disputes i am confident that the resorting to crime would be less uh, and the court systems in our uh, people the worry part is why is there growth in uh, criminal litigation and not such a growth in civil litigation people feel that the civil litigation takes a lot of time so it will never come to an end so the lawyers will advise them how to invoke the criminal jurisdiction to give the civil dispute a color of criminal dispute this is the last section when we i am wondering for example that uh, a lot of women are resorting to the criminal jurisdiction as brother kana said But that's also occurring because some of the one is awareness; they are more aware and willing to do so. Uh, Sanjeev provided the guiding light. Example is bare and staring. In prison for a day, the hardening of the stand is so much that it becomes far more difficult to reconcile the situations. So, for the purpose which the criminal jurisdiction should be resorted to is resorted to less, and for which it should not be resorted to, it gets resorted. That's the problem which arises in. the manner in which um, the legal system works and how the advice takes place now the nalsa is creating an online mechanism based on e prisons uh, network which could automatically alert stakeholders i think it's a you know very innovative method we suddenly found that a large section of prisoners who had been granted bail were still in prison because they could not meet their requirements but nobody knows that they are still unable to give the bail bond or able to give the bail security so the system when it operates fully will have a, a some kind of a seven day period after which it flags the issue so the legal service authority can go and say well even after seven days if he is not released on bail there must be some reason for it to check invariably it will be because some condition is not met so we can take out this this whole category of cases um 
where people, despite judicial discussion being exercised, are not able to avail of it. Um, updation, adaptation, upgradation, enhancement of mediation at the block level, I think, which I have flagged is a very important part. I do believe that legal services, in a sense, go hand in hand with mediation. Both processes um, can assist in ultimately resolving disputes at base level. And my faith in mediation is because people do not understand the niceties of law. The people of law understand the niceties. Uh, what is justice? And we try to find the beginning. Ultimately, that must, must know that if he wants X, why he can't get X or why he gets Y. The legal system in a legal jargon will tell him that you get Z. And he will not know what is the what is the reason for it. So mediation endeavors to see what a person wants and to find the needs of a person. That's why you begin a mediation training uh, with the example of a of a uh, of an orange and saying that look the the court if it has to give half and half will only divide the orange and give it away. <coughs> While the mediator will find out if somebody wants to use the juice. Uh, for baking a cake and somebody wants to make a marmalade out to the rhyme, uh, you can divide it in a different manner. All the insurance companies um, and uh, the stakeholders, the police, the victim are there. So an app is being developed almost finalized which will operate at a national level and the central government and state governments are also on board on this issue. So that will help in uh, a reduction of uh, of cases from, the, from registration of the accident to the disbursement of compensation. There are thousands of crores of compensation lying deposited in courts which are not being disbursed. Chennai uh, research was done a huge issue and that when such funds lie becomes an avenue for people to uh, break into the system to somehow, you know, all kinds of issues arise in that. Now, those are problems which also require to be addressed. One of my colleagues recently said, uh, I'll pass on it to the links of the authority, where he's going to decide that how many cases with amounts of compensation really of one or two lakhs in appeals are pending, where the insurance company, where the order of the court below is pay and recover, still the insurance company is gone on appeal. So he said, why can't insurance companies through the legal service authority be persuaded to withdraw the appeals? In taxation, the government says that the, the stake is above something for different courts, we will not contest. Should insurance companies uh, be contesting these cases, especially where there's pay and recover orders, if the other party is not come? This is something uh, which was put to me only yesterday. Two states, which was Punjab and Haryana and Tamil Nadu, which I had an opportunity to preside, is what are excellence claim cases. Should this be an area of litigation which should pend? Money comes at a stage when they really don't need it that much. When they need it, it doesn't come. In Punjab and Haryana, I remember statistics of when I was there of 2,70,000 cases pending out of it, 35,000 were what are excellence claim cases. Similarly, Chennai had similar figures of what are excellence claim cases. These are areas how we can reduce the burden of the courts. Ultimately, in no system I think we can achieve in every case has to be fought from the lowest to the highest court. The US system provides for 3% cases to go on trial. We take 99.9% .9 cases to trial. Of course, government is a great uh, contributory to it because they are more than 50% litigant in some way or the other. So the government has to also walk, to my mind, hand in hand to reduce this amount. Maybe this mediation bill has been receiving consideration for the last two years. Um, it is, I'm hoping that this year will say, in what form I don't know because the Supreme Court had a role, role to play in it in the sense that we constituted the expert mediators committee. They took help from all the experts across the world and made a draft bill. It's a unique endeavor of sending it to the government as a suggested legislation. Uh, it's been two years hence the parliamentary committee respect mutilated it beyond recognition, I think. And then the government sent it to an expert committee again to look into it. I'm, I'm hoping um, this would uh, see the day of, as and when the parliament works on the issue. Uh, so that, because we are committed to the Singapore Convention where we have to bring this building. I'm sure if it's institutionalized, again, this will walk, walk hand in hand with the legal service authority to do something.